Good morning, graders. Been a little while since I posted anything. We're going to do a slab fill today on this uh, house. It's a TV house. And uh, I'm just waiting on the dump truck and the loader. I'm going to start stripping all these batter boards, stacking them aside. We got to move all that block and concrete out of the way. But we'll have dirt coming in. We already got three loads over there. And we'll fill this today. And hopefully, you'll enjoy the footage. Hope you're all doing well. I appreciate you watching. I hope that you'll subscribe and like and. Uh, you know put us on your notifications and i appreciate it guys we'll get with you in just a moment all right graders we've got a good start on this we just uh put those three loads of dirt in and now we're working on this back patio i put some in the garage we got to put a little bit more before we grade that up <clears throat> right now he's just putting some dirt in the corners just helps us for later and then he'll go on the outside of this wall and uh, finish dragging that dirt to the edge there but that's what we got going on right now if you hear some talking in the background I have some headphones in sometimes it picks up the recording and I listen to preaching and I listen to hunting and fishing podcast and I also like to listen to Dave Ramsey some of you guys might not be a fan but <clears throat> it helps pass the days all right, guys, I'll get back with you when we start actually grading some. Right now, like I said, we're just working on these patios and porches. Nothing too exciting.
Okay, graders, <clears throat> we've got about half of this slab filled. And right now he is rolling the slab with a full bucket of dirt. We roll these to compact them. And then we'll also put the plate compactor on them uh, in the places that the loader can't get. But we do this in about one foot stages, one foot lifts. And uh, it gets us a pretty good compaction. The problem we're running into right now is our dirt is a little bit wet. And uh, we've had a lot of rain here lately. And even the, the, the dirt from the dirt pits, the dirt we dig, everything's wet right now. So it has to be compacted really well. And then we have some dry dirt that we're gonna put over top of this to make it a little easier to grade. It's hard to grade wet dirt. But that's pretty much uh, what we're doing today. I know I'm not getting a ton of footage here, to be honest with you guys. For literally two and a half weeks, I've been under the weather and just now starting to feel a little better it's hard to get motivated when you're sick we've had the flu my whole family's had the flu um, a lot of our church members have been sick it's just been a mess here the last couple of weeks but that's what we're into right now and i'll give you some footage as we get this thing filled up maybe i'll give you a little more tractor time today of my brother grading this up when we're done and uh maybe if i if i and think of something before I get off work today. Maybe I'll do a devotion at the end. So appreciate you guys watching. We'll get back with you here shortly. Okay, graders. We've got most of the dirt in. And we're starting the grading process. Just doing a little bit of a rough grade right now. We'll roll this one more time. Get some compaction out of it. Right now he's just roughing it in. We'll measure it. And then he'll spin it off and make it real pretty. But that's pretty much it guys very short video as far as work footage i'm sorry just been busy all day I may come back at the very end and show you guys the final product but other than that this video is done and i will uh probably do a devotion at the end of this so stay tuned okay graders we just finished up that job <clears throat> i'm sorry i really am i know i've said it several times in this video about the lack of footage but some of those jobs we just have to really get with it to to be done in time um, they've called inspection for tomorrow so it's just one of those deals where we have to get it done today and it kind of robs a little bit of my time. I have not done a devotion in quite some time. I've had a lot of stuff going on. First of all, I had some dental work of all the things. I've never had dental trouble in my life. And uh, anyways, long story short, I, I cracked a tooth and it turned into a nightmare. Um, the dentist accidentally sliced a hole under my tongue. I had to have that stitched up and it's just been a mess. And on top of that, during the time in which I was kind of going through that dental stuff, I got the flu. And so, uh, just just been a rough couple of weeks, and I'm finally back to where I can talk good and, and eat, praise the Lord. Um, I like to eat. You can probably tell that by looking at me. But uh, I thought I would give you guys a little bit of, de of a devotion as we go home, and it's always easy for me when I'm thinking about a devotion, um, is to usually tail that off of something that I've just preached at, at our church. And so... Uh, the last time I was up, I'm actually up this Sunday, I, I rotate with a co-pastor, and um, I'll be up this coming Sunday, but I'm going to just do a quick devotion on what I preached about last Sunday, and that was a, a passage from Matthew 10, uh, somewhere between verse 24 and 32, I actually preached sort of that whole story there, and what's going on in Matthew chapter 10 is Jesus is... Um, instructing his disciples that he wants them to go out and win the lost sheep of Israel. And so uh, this particular lesson was more geared towards his disciples winning the Jews, uh, their own native people. Now we do know that later he would inform Paul, he would inform Peter um, that both Gentiles and Jews could be saved. And so sort of the church age began. That's that's for another day. We don't have to get into the, the weeds on that. But um, at the beginning of chapter 10, the Bible uh, talks about how that Jesus or the Holy Spirit gives to the disciples some powers 
to go out and do things like heal the sick, uh, cause the blind to see, uh, things like that. Uh, heal all, all manner of sicknesses and disease. And he tells them to beware of something. He tells them that if the master suffered, and it's talking about himself, if he was rejected, if he was ridiculed, if he was mocked, if he was scorned, which we know that he was, that certainly they were going to experience those same things. And he, uh, he, he there's some pretty prominent verses uh, that are tied in there. Before we get to the verse I want to focus on, uh, one of the things he tells them is to not fear those who can only kill the body, but to fear the one who can kill both body and soul and send it to hell. That's rough language, but it, it's the truth, guys. Um, we shouldn't have fear of the world around us or the people around us. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't use some common sense around rough characters and different things, but we shouldn't have fear to spread the gospel message. Don't fear those who have no power over where your soul is going to spend eternity. Rather, fear the one who created your soul. Fear the one who, who, for lack of a better way of saying it, holds uh, your life in the balance of his hands or the balance of your life in his hands, the one who created us. Uh, those are the ones we're to fear. Most of the time in the Bible, when fear is talked about, it's talked about in a negative sense. Um, you, you'll recall, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and a sound mind. All manner of verses throughout the Bible tell us to fear not. Now Solomon, one of the wisest men who ever lived, said this about fear. He said the beginning of, or, or, or fear of God was the beginning of all wisdom. So there is a healthy fear. We should fear the one, not that we're scared of him or that he's going to do something bad to us, but there should be a reverent fear of the God who created the entire universe and by doing so he created, created you and I as well, which I absolutely believe that Jesus uh, created everything. But he tells them, don't fear the ones who can't damage the soul. Fear the one who can damage the soul and the body and cast that into hell. In other words, get your orders in a fair, have a, a healthy fear of God, uh, allow God to reign and rule over your life. And he goes on to tell them um, that they're going to suffer. He says, the, the servant is not above the master. Um, if I suffered, you're going to suffer. We know that Jesus suffered. We know that Jesus uh, ultimately would pay the ultimate price, which was his death on the cross. But, but even before that, he suffered ridicule and rejection from his own people. Um, you, you might recall, this, this is something that always kind of irks me as a minister, as a pastor. Uh, we see on TV, we see these TV preachers uh, begging you to sow a seed. Now, that seed always happens to be money, which should be a red flag right from the get-go. Uh, they say, sow this seed and, and, and God will bless it. He'll multiply it and you'll be rich and happy and all these things. Guys, that's not the gospel. That's not the true gospel. I don't care what your doctrine is. That is not the, the true gospel. Now, did does the Bible say that he's never seen the righteous forsaken nor the seed begging bread? Of course, I believe if you place your faith in, faith in Christ and we seek after his righteousness and his kingdom first, then a lot of these material things will be added unto us. But listen what Jesus said in Capernaum, which is where he lived most of his life uh, or, or, or during his ministry. He said, foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man have no place to lay his head. Sounds to me like Jesus wasn't rich. Sounds to me like um, his father didn't give him all kinds of riches and glory while he was on this earth. And basically Jesus says to the disciples, if I didn't receive those things, if rather I, I received suffering and persecution, that's coming for you as well. In fact, Jesus had more insight than that. He knew that eventually uh, the, most of those disciples would lay their life down in martyrdom and that they would be martyred. In fact, he told Peter that, that Peter uh, had carried himself on this earth, but rest assured he would be carried away, that he would be basically crucified. He foretold his, uh, his future. So Jesus knew that these guys were going to face some suffering, but I love what Jesus closes that that thought with, the thought that they were going to suffer, the thought that they were going to be rejected and, and have some persecution in their life. He says to them, your Father in heaven knows every single hair on your head. But then he closes with this. I think it's around uh, verse number 32. Don't quote me on it. You can go look it up yourself. Um, he says that sparrows that are sold for a farthing, which to the best of my knowledge, a farthing in the Bible is about a quarter of a penny. He said, basically says to them, sparrows are worthless. They're sold uh, in pairs for a farthing, but yet not a single one of them falls to the ground without your Father in heaven taking notice. In other words, Jesus was saying this, if God cares and takes notice when a worthless little sparrow falls to the ground, 
how much more do you think he cares for you who are called by his name and according to his purpose? He goes on to say, you are of much more value than sparrows. And so that's my uh, thought for today is don't let this world tell you. You know, we're living in a, in a secular society where science is being pushed and pushed and pushed. The only problem with science is you can never truly know it. Um, science is constantly being uh, upgraded or they, they have different thoughts or different ideals why things are happening when they could just turn to the scriptures. But science and scienti uh, scientists and atheists and those who don't believe in the Bible are constantly telling us that we are nothing more than a clump of cells. We are nothing more than bacteria that formed millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of years ago. The only problem with that is Jesus did not believe that, and I believe Jesus with all my heart. The Bible does not teach that. The Bible teaches that we were created out of the dust of the earth. Uh, there's even some scientific proof to that. Um, my point in that is, the scientist or the layperson of today who is not a believer would tell you certainly the sparrows have no value, but neither do we. We're equal with the sparrows. I don't believe that. I believe that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. I believe as human beings we are made in his image. I believe that we are his image bearers. I believe that we have something that animals and plants don't, and that is a conscience and a soul, and that we, we have it engrafted and written on our hearts that we know right from wrong. Um, do we always follow that path? Obviously not. We do not. But I believe we certainly are more valuable than sparrows. So don't let the world, don't let the enemy tell you that you're just treading water, that you have no value, that there's no use for you, God doesn't have plans for you. That's not true. Sorry, guys, my camera's uh, falling around while I'm driving here. Guys, Jesus said that we have more value than sparrows. That doesn't sound like a whole lot, except for the fact that he just got through telling us that not even a little sparrow, which the world considers insignificant, falls to the ground without our Father in heaven taking notice. And I read that to say, I don't want to add or take away from the Bible, so don't accuse me of that. I read that to say that God cares for the sparrows. That, that in fact, it might break his heart when the sparrows fall to the ground. But how much more, how much more valuable are you and I as followers of Christ and as image bearers of God? How much more value do you and I have? So that's my encouragement for you today. Don't let the world tell you you have no value. Jesus himself said, you have value. And don't let your circumstances determine whether or not you believe you have value. Uh, remember, he told them, you guys are going to suffer, but you're valuable. You guys are going to be persecuted, but you're valuable. You guys are going to uh, be ridiculed and mocked and scorned and rejected, but you're valuable. In other words, don't worry about the rewards or the benefits that you get on this earth. Lay your treasures up in heaven. I hope that's an encouragement to you. It's an, it's an encouragement to me. First of all, to even believe that we serve a God who cares even when these little insignificant birds fall to the ground. Gosh, that gives me hope for how much more he cares for you and I who were created in his own image. So I hope that was a blessing to you. I hope this video was entertaining to you. If you would, please subscribe, please like, hit the notification, comment guys, even on these uh, devotions. I love uh, bouncing ideas. I, I've had a lot of interaction over these devotions. I, I'm aware, guys, and, and I'm rambling here a little bit, but that's okay. I'm aware that not everybody believes like I do. Even within the church body, I've gotten a little bit of kickback by, by different beliefs and people who are belong to different denominations. Guys, listen, if we wanted to, yes, we could divide hairs and I could, I could argue back and forth. That's not what I'm about. The truth of the matter is at the end of the day, we're all going to get some things wrong and some things right. But you better get a few things right. You better get things like Jesus being the only way. You better get that right. You better get things like there is no other name among he in heaven among men uh, but whereby we must be saved. Uh, you better get that he did die, that he was buried, that he was resurrected, and that he is offering a gift of salvation. You better get those things right. Uh, the rest of it is legalistic. The rest of it is just things for you and I to argue about. I I'm just not in the business of that. Could I do it? Yes, I, I can defend my faith, and I believe we're, we're called to defend our faith. But that's not what I want to do on this channel. What I want to do on this channel is to encourage you that Jesus is real. Even in this world that we perceive as evil and everything going wrong, guys, listen. When Jesus ascended to heaven, again, I'm rambling, but that's okay. I feel like I'm talking to friends here. When Jesus ascended to heaven, this is what the Bible says. Jesus said, all power in heaven and earth is given to me. And then God called him up to his right hand. The Bible says over and over again, beginning in Psalm uh, 110 verse 1, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies my footstool. What does that tell me and you? 
That tells me and you that when Jesus ascended, he took his place as rightful ruler and reigner over both heaven and earth. That means right now Jesus is ruling. He is king. He is Lord. We're on the winning side, guys. We're victorious. We have something to shout about. We have something to be encouraged about. So I hope that's an encouragement to you guys. I hope you don't mind me rambling a little bit. I love to talk scripture. You probably can, can tell that. Uh, I just want to be an encouragement to you. Thanks again for watching the videos. We'll get back with you on another one this week. Thanks, guys.